So the next talk will be given by Mario Segeti from Rutgers University, and he's going to give us a survey of the area law. Yeah, so, so it's a survey talk, and um, I'm deeply indebted to Fernando Brandao and Umesh Vazirani. So in the last three days, I was preparing for this talk, and I had a, a lot of correspondence with Fernando, and also had a telephone conversation with Umesh, and I gained a lot of insight from them. Um, and as you see, like I started the talks by myself, and actually, you know, every good novel, like in every good novel, the main character goes through sort of a personality development. So you will see this development in uh, this talk. Um, it's going to be actually a development in my philosophy about the area law. And, well, it's <clears throat> due to talking with Fernando and Umesh. So, um, well, the area law, well, all of you have heard about it. It's um, like a heuristics. So heuristics are not proven about the ground state of certain quantum Hamiltonians. So certain quantum Hamiltonians, well, uh, local gapped uh, Hamiltonians, where, so uh, local means that the Hilbert space on which they act, they uh, decompose into like small like tensor components um, and so these are the locales and uh, the local terms act on just a couple of components each and then uh, so you will see in the next slide and um, the uh, so the the the, the, the um, whole layout has a geometry which is the either d dimensional grid or something more substantial than that. Um, what should I push here? The connector is not connected. You mean this one? Or okay. So in any case, so um, so local and gapped. Um, so. Uh, So uh, I'm hoping that it's, is it getting back? <laughs> okay, so, so local and gap. So we have been talking about this like in these sections. Um, uh, there are a lot of wonderful talks where like we have seen pictures of, you know, these local terms acting on the sides. Um, uh, so these are the um, so the Hamiltonian capital H is um, like this is an example. So the dots mean um, like tensor components um, each. Uh, okay, so I'm sorry. So I'm already in, uh, talking about this slide, <laughs> and um, so the dots are tensor components and. Um, each tensor, each, each dot is a qubit or qubit, and the Hamiltonian itself is sum of the well, local terms, meaning that terms that act on like a, cu a couple of qubits. Uh, well, I always assume that each term acts on two qubits in this talk, but uh, of course um, we can think uh, we can generalize them. Uh, we can think of more generalized acting on k qubits. Um, each local term, where the Hamiltonian is a matrix which has norm bounded by one, we assume we can also assume it's positive. Um, so that's what it means local. Now gapped, what it means is simply that the eigenvalue gap of the Hamiltonian. Um, so uh, so if you if you look at the energy of the ground state, so the energy is the phi h, I mean phi dagger h phi. Um, uh, the uh, so the ground state which minimizes that, so the phi the state which minimizes that, and so we are looking for the properties of this phi, and so if this Hamiltonian is such that anything which is orthogonal to the any state which is orthogonal to the ground state has significantly higher energy, namely uh, uh, higher by at least an epsilon, that we say 
that this, that this Hamiltonian has an epsilon gap. Now, so what is the area law? So the area law, and actually is the previous slide, so there is like a mainstream area law which says, so just as the most um, prominent like version of the area law would say that on the grid, let's say on the two-dimensional grid, if you have a local Hamiltonian where like the locality just follows the grid structure, so every local Hamiltonian connects either a horizontal edge, uh, uh, two points in the horizontal edge or vertical edge. Um, so with this particular locality, if it's gapped, then the following holds for the ground state. So the ground state is phi g, and so this expression, the trace of phi g x times log phi g, uh, so that's a matrix, so phi g, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, so phi g x, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm going too quickly. So consider like any like set of locals, so that's x, the set x is just a bunch of locals which kind of like form an area pictorially, and so, and so consider that portion of the Hilbert space, namely the tensor product of the corresponding qubits. So consider that portion, and so trace out the rest from the, from the ground state. So that's we call phi g x. So that's, that's like, so this state is a mixed state. So we traced out from the, um, uh, from the ground state, so we get the phi g x, and so this mixed state, um, so we are looking at the von Neumann entropy of this mixed state, which is like the minus trace phi g x log phi g x. So there's the von Neumann entropy of this mixed state is at bounded by the size of the boundary of this region x. So um, again, so this, this uh, von Neumann entropy of the, um, of the state on X, it's called the entanglement entropy across X, and so in words, so what this formula says is that the entanglement entropy is at most the boundary of X. So that's what the, the one might say the area law is. Um, so I have already explained what is local and gapped, so this 2D version is, heuri is a heuristic, it's not proven. But what is proven is the same for one dimension. So in one dimension, again, we can look at a region X, and now let me just restrict myself to contiguous region, because actually one can easily see that it's enough now to just prove the area law for contiguous regions. So again, the same thing. So now the locality is just a line. And the Hamiltonian is just, so the local terms are now just these um, like edges of the line. And um, so now the area law says, so the boundary of x is now just two edges. So it's constant. So um, again, the area law says that, um, so again, we trace out from the ground state of this Hamiltonian um, the uh, complement of X, and so we assume again that the Hamiltonian is gapped with gap epsilon, and that the locales have dimension D, then uh, uh, so the um, entanglement entropy across the boundary of X would be just constant because D is constant and epsilon is constant. So, uh, so uh, uh, Aharon of Arad, Kitaev, Landau, and Vazirani gave this upper bound in terms of D and epsilon, log cube D divided by epsilon. But actually, the history, well, if you just want a constant, then 
really the breakthrough was done by Hastings, who proved it's a verse bound, but it's, it's still a constant because it just depends on d and epsilon, log d, e to the log d divided by epsilon. Um, so why area law? Like, why do we want this particular theorem? Um, so if we have a classical state, and we want to ask, like we have a subsystem, and again, just the individual bits of the classical state, which is just a string. The individual bits, so we, we pick a subset of bits. So if it's very easy to tell what that string is on those bits, it's a substring. But now if you have a quantum state and you ask just like someone who does not know anything about quantum information theory, so what is the quantum state on those bits? Then this, not, this is not an easy question to answer. Of course, we all know the answer. The answer is that take those bits, take the state, and trace out the complement. But you know what you get is like a reduced density operator, which looks kind of ugly. It's on the bottom. But that that's ugly creature is what the quantum state on the subsystem is. So we have to deal with that. And so why the area law? So the area law wants to, well, says that um, this subsystem, or the state on that, that, that subsystem, um, is kind of independent from the complement. So, um, so actually, it's, it's, it's better to do a basis change to see that so, uh, and to understand what it says. So if I take x and I take x complement, then again, that's all of you know, like how to sort of understand the state, which is like on a, a bipartite state on x, x complement. So the best basis to understand that is to sort of like making, uh, like lining up, um, like picking a basis in X and picking a basis in X complement, like you know, uh, such that um, the state is expressed as sum of delta i, ui, vi, where ui's are the states on x and vi are the states on x complement. So the, the, the key thing is that you don't see ui, vj's, you just see ui, vi. So it's, it's always possible to do this and, well, that's again, that's, I am not saying anything novum here, like everyone knows this. But what these delta i's are, like if, there, if this sum had only one term, it would mean that this state would be just a tensor product, like a state in X and another state in the complement. So the more terms it has, the more entangled the state across the X, X complement boundary. So, and so the numbers of these delta, of the non-zero delta i's is relevant, but also the sizes of the non-zero delta i's. So this von Neumann entropy is just the entropy of the delta i squared, the sequence of delta 1 squared, delta 2 squared, delta r squared, which, by the way, add, add up to 1, and again, as common knowledge. And so here comes the, this personality development um, that I promised you that um, so you see here, I sort of try to be dogmatic, and I said that so why area law? So I wanted to make a convincing case that area law is indeed like the big thing we have to consider. Um, and I really meant it, so I was trying really hard. But then, like, and even in this slide, like I am arguing that, OK, so if where these delta i's are like are not numerous, so we have in this sum, this sum has only a small number of terms. The number of terms is called the Schmidt rank. Uh, 
So if it has a small number of terms that, again, we can understand the state by understanding the left side, understanding the right side, and understanding how they are connected with this like R by R matrix. And so now here, where the entanglement entropy, if it is small, what it says, it does not say that we have like a small number of non-zero Rs, but what it says is that like we have a small number of large Rs, and then like maybe we have a bunch of other, I mean, bunch, small number of, um, of, of large deltas, and maybe I, we have like a lot of negligibly small deltas that we can sort of just delete from the state and we still remain close. So here I say that if the entanglement entropy is small, then we sort of, we can still understand the state in a divide and conquer manner. So the left side, I mean the X side and the X complement side and the connecting thing play with a little error. But if you want the error to be the size error, then actually the rank is going to be 2 to the, like the entanglement entropy, and I apologize, so my notation is terrible, but entanglement entropy I just call ES, denote it with ES, because S stands for entropy and E stands for entanglement. So I apologize for that, but so it's 2 to the, the entanglement uh, entropy divided by the error. So if we want to really just neglect the tail, like those deltas that are really small, then we need to go to rank like as large as the exponent of the entanglement entropy divided by the error. And so I even hear like, and that's when I talked to Umesh, I would I said that, okay, so that leads to, you know, if the entanglement entropy is small, like we prove it in one dimension, for instance, so there is a proof, then we can create an algorithm with a little effort. Um, but then here comes the disclaimer. So actually, uh, in the paper of Landau, Vazirani, and Vidik, they don't just use the area law alone when they construct a matrix product state representation of the ground state of a gapped Hamiltonian, but they are actually using like stronger properties of that state. So they use approximate ground state projectors. So the area law is simply not strong enough for the practical purposes we need. So that might actually uh, like raises a flag and you might say, okay, so the area law is maybe not the law we are looking for. And um, so, but I sort of keep just going on and tell, so what do we know about the area law and its kinds? So, so I am now uh, talking about the area law, but I am also sort of looking out a little bit and seeing what's out there besides just the plain vanilla area law. Uh, so first of all, like the geometry, like we always think of the area law as the geometry is the grid, but in fact we can think about that the geometry is an arbitrary graph and um, uh, so, of course, the area law have, has to be phrased appropriately. Um, so, for general graphs, actually, when the local terms commute, so we, have, we make a restriction on the types of the operators that the local terms represent, we actually, we do have the following super general area law, but Again, we need to assume this very strong assumption on the local terms that they commute. So then the uh, entanglement entropy according to a cut is bounded by the size of the cut. 
which we see that like if it's a grid, then the cut is really just the perimeter. So again, I don't even know who invented this. As, does anyone know? I mean, it is uh, who invented this theorem? Yeah, the, the community can. So that's obvious, but that's like folklore or something. But so um, now there is another. Um, so, but now we also have a, a counterexample for general graphs, which says that the same cut theorem is not true uh, for non-commuting Hamiltonians. So the counterexample is a very pathologic graph where the cut just goes through one edge, but the the uh, two endpoints of those edge have like huge degree, and actually it could still be possible that the area law holds for fairly general graphs where like let's say every degree is bounded by three. So we don't have a counterexample in that case. So the area law could be true for general graphs, but not like with unbounded degree. Um, so talking about general graphs, so do we know anything about the ground state of um, gapped Hamiltonian in general graphs, or, or we don't have any knowledge? Well, actually, we do know something. So uh, Hastings has proven, um, uh, OK, so it's the next slide. So, I need to introduce you uh, correlation. So correlation between two parts of the quantum system, like x and y, is like this. That, so let's row x, y be when you trace out just the, what is not x in not y, I call it b. So just trace out b from the ground state. So, Rho x is when you trace out y, and rho y is when you trace out x. And the correlation between x and y is this formula, um, which let me not explain at this point. Later, I have a slide that I very quickly, I, it won't explain it, because frankly, you need to look at it for a week in order to really see what this formula is. And even then, you will not understand completely what this formula is. But, um, but this is the correlation. And um, so what Hastings has proven is that um, if it's a gapped Hamiltonian with this locality structure, so the locality structure is just this graph, then if you, took, if you take two regions that are far from each other in terms of like the shortest path between x and y has lengths at least this, I call it distance between x and y, then the correlation actually goes down exponentially in terms of this distance. So of course, let's assume that the gap is, is constant. I, I mean, this constant depends on the gap um, of course, and on the local dimensions. Um, so, but the important thing is it goes down exponentially with the distance. Um, but, well, I said correlation decay, but really you can always question the definition. So is this the right notion of correlation? So, as I said, this formula, well, frankly, maybe not for you, but for me, actually, I want to study it for the next year this correlation, not just for a week, but um, like, you know, the correlation, what it does, it sort of relates this rho xy with rho x tensor rho y. So somehow, if, if rho xy is the same as rho x tensor rho y, it means that, rho, that the state does not correlate on x and y, and otherwise it does. So, but, now you can measure the difference between rho x y and rho x tensor rho y in some other ways, as in the as in the previous slide, um, whatever. 
um, like, the, like here, like here we measure it, the rho x y minus rho x rho y in some ways. We can measure it in some other ways. For instance, just the, by the L1 distance. So that gives you another like correlation measure. And that that's would be just with this correlation measure, like if you could prove the, um, um, well, the, the, the uh, correlation, uh, the decay of correlations with respect to this correlation measure, then it would immediately imply the area law. But I think there is, it's even not true. But so here is this, this extra slide that I said that the definitions matter. Because like if you look at the correlation definition, so it's, it's the trace of where well, you are measuring this matrix rho x y minus rho x times rho y uh, with this matrix mx tensor n y. But what if instead of this tensor product matrix, you just measured it with just a non-tensor product matrix on the whole, like x, y space, like with Q. Then you would get a different notion. And with this notion, you would just get like a super strong correlation measure. Again, something like this L1 norm, it would be just a super strong notion. And if the correlation of DK would be true with respect to this correlation measure, then again, it would immediately imply the area law. Um, so, but no result is known for this stronger correlation except for 1D systems where actually surprisingly uh, the weak correlation DK implies the strong correlation DK. So with respect to this correlation measure. Um, and um, well, so this is, I guess I was running ahead. So this is what I have said, that the strong correlation would immediately imply the area law. Um, so, um, so again, whether you know which correlation is the right notion is again a question. So going back to the line, and really, this is my last um, set of three or four slides, no matter how much time I have. How much time do I have? Minus 12 minutes. So actually, maybe it's too much for me. So uh, because like, I am just going to finish up with, the, with some thoughts on the line. So, so so we, um, we talked about arbitrary graphs and like ground states of local Hamiltonians on arbitrary graphs. But really what we understand, and we don't even understand that fully, uh, gapped Hamiltonians just on the line. So what do we understand and what, don't we, what do not we understand? So we know there is an area law and we and so due to Brandau and Horodetsky, we also know that the, that the decay of correlation implies the area law. Uh, and again, this, so this is the weak decay of correlation implies the area law on the line. And again, I remind you, it does not imply on the grid. Well, we don't know if it implies on the grid. It would be great if it did. Um, but the decay of correlation so, so it, it says, so I, I really love this uh, paper because, because it's very mathematical. Because, you know, the DK of correlation just talks about, it does not talk about Hamiltonians or anything. It just talks about a state. It says that if a state has this mathematical property, then it says that, that it has that mathematical property. So if the state, has the DK of correlation property, then it has the area law property. So I think it's a very nice theorem, but you see here that 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 is like a little drawback compared to so this is a new proof for the area law of the line where we, if we if we actually combine it with uh, with Hastings result that the DK of correlation holds for gapped 
Hamiltonians on the line. So this is a new proof. Well, and actually, every, so uh, but but it has the drawback that what you get for the entanglement entropy is two to the so and the two to the is the thing. It's two to the psi, where psi is the parameter, is the correlation dk parameter. And actually, it, it cannot be proven due to, and I learned it from Fernando again, that due to a very recent result of Hastings, uh, this formula simply cannot be proven, uh, in, improved. So, so this gives like a worse bound than the um, other um, uh, the other uh, uh, area low bounds. Um, so the Fernand, uh, so actually Fernando and Horodetsky came up now with so they had a sequence of I guess two papers at least. But so in 2015 they came out at like this new like 30 pages paper on the same thing and. Yeah, I think it's, I, I want to read it because it's just, you can learn so much from it. But in particular, what you can learn from it um, is that, so not only the area law is implied by the decay of correlations, but the decay of correlation uh, gives rise to like efficient classical representation of, so if a state has the decay of correlation, then you can efficiently represent it as a matrix product state. Um, and you can also, um, well, I, and I have said that on the line, the weak decay of correlation implies the strong, with the strong notion of correlation, the decay of correlation. Um, and still, the line, um, so if you ask, so which is stronger? The, the, um, exponential decay of correlation or the area law. So the area law does not imply the exponential decay of correlation as opposed to the other direction. Um, for instance, so there is a very simple example where I don't try the 1 over square root of 2. So the 0, 0, 0 plus 1, 1, 1 obeys the area law, but not the exponential decay of correlation. Um, so going back to, again, still on the line, the Arat Kitayev Landau Vazirani paper and its ancestors with Aharonov. Um, so this log d cubed divided by epsilon upper bound on the entanglement entropy is not clear whether it's, the, it's very good, like it's better than what you get with, by any methods, with Hastings or the uh, Fernando and Horodetsky, but but the d cube could still be improved conceivably, but if you could improve it to d squared, then that would already imply the area law for two-dimensional two grids. Now, um, um, so that paper, that four authors paper, uh, has another interesting aspect. So the area law on the line um, is there because like if you make a cut that you don't need to know how it exactly looks all the way. You just need to know that around the cut, it, the, the, the geometry is a line. But so how long it should be a line so that the area law would hold. And the length is where currently is log square d divided by epsilon. And if you could make it shorter, which would be a stronger statement, that you would say that if you know only a shorter neighborhood, then that would already imply the area law, that would improve, well, according to Umesh, it, he conjectures it would improve on the log cube d per, divided by epsilon uh, bound. And actually, um, like Daniel in his talk and others are looking at this kind of setting and see like for how, lo how long chains uh, would already uh, like imply the area law. And so here the uh, question is like how the gap, how the length depends 
depends on the gap. Um, so my final slide is therefore, well, it completely shows my um, ideological improvement from being an area law dogmatic to an area law skeptical um, is that there are all sorts of stronger notions. Um, like for instance, if you replace the von Neumann entropy with the Rényi entropy uh, in the definition of the area law, or we, or for, and I also just with my conversation with, with Umesh yesterday, that he believes that the approximate ground state projector, the existence, could be actually a more profound um, phenomenon than, than the area law, uh, at least, well, for us theoreticians. Uh, uh, so the decay of correlation is, a, is another candidate to replace it, but like we don't know, and the strong decay of correlation. And so all these, so in order to get algorithms, you need definitely one of these uh, to get, uh, to, so these stronger, well, they are, we don't know about the decay of correlation, very stronger, but in 1D it implies algorithms. And again, the area law itself, at least in 1D, it does not give us algorithm. And so this all, this all goes back to the fact that so the nirvana would be to say something that like in systems, like in, uh, I mean in states like ground states of gapped Hamiltonian, when I take a, a region X and its complement, then there is a small Schmidt rank in between them. But that's simply not true. If, the, if there was shmo, small Schmidt rank everywhere, so that would be really ideal, then we could just slice the space, I mean we just could just slice the state and we would get, we could write it as a matrix product state um, uh, like with no pain. But, so this, so this is sort of, this would top all of the above and somehow to understand the hierarchy of these assumptions or what we want to prove, we should, I think, uh, compare everything like how close these statements are to saying that actually the the Schmidt rank is small. Um, so there is, we have some compass, it's not just that, so the compass is the Schmidt rank. It's not just that, like, okay, so we have all sorts of possible statements, so we don't know what we want to prove. So we kind of know, we want to prove that, that we are, like, we are, like, as close to the situation in some measure, uh, that the Schmidt rank is small as possible. And I have three minutes and I, I am finished because as a, this is the last slide. Thank you very much. And, um, okay, thanks, so we have time for questions. Thanks. Okay. Well, it's, so, it's going to be an easy session for me because I can always just say I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I just wanted to ask you to repeat. I, I didn't quite understand the point about, um, you said something about the length and if you could improve upon, uh, uh, if you go back a couple of slides. Yeah, there. So what did you okay, mean by Okay, so what does awful? it say? Yeah. Right? So it says that... Um, so consider a system where um, just you have like two large systems on the side and in the, and in the middle you have these, D di these Q dits. And the interactions are like the leftmost Q dit with the big left side and then the interactions between neighboring Q, bits, Q dits and then the Q dit with the right side. So let's assume now that instead of those numerous Q dits in the middle, we just have two. And so now you are asking, so what is the entanglement entropy between those two? 
Now that entanglement entropy could be, even if the system is, even if the Hamiltonian is gapped, it could be arbitrarily large. So now let's assume that we are keeping epsilon and everything, that it's not two, but it's three or four or da da da. Then it still can be large, but then when you reach log square d divided, so the length reaches log square d divided by epsilon, then actually the, the um, uh, not I don't know, the, the, the um, whatever Umesh at all paper uh, shows that then if you cut in the middle, the entanglement entropy is constant. So there is a certain length where the area, where the, this area law kicks in when you cut in the middle. I mean, the entanglement entropy uh, is going to be a constant. So if it's, the chain is too small, it's not going to be a constant. And again, I, I, I tell you that it's not quite the line because those two big things means, mean two big systems on the two sides. Other questions? Hi. Where it seems to make things trivial to just think about graphs of fixed degree. Um, yeah. Well, then, then it's a, then we don't know. So it could be a very general area law, which says that for graphs of fixed degree, if you look at a cut in the graph, so you just take the graph apart then the entanglement entropy, well, it's gapped and local according to graph, then the entanglement entropy equal or less or equal than the cut size. So that would be a great area law, great general area law. We don't know. It could still be true. Is anything known about the area law on trees? Well, I don't know. But, but you know, I was, of course, these trees sort of flashed me to, so I, I would, so, so I would, it, it's a very, it's a good research project. I think it's a very, it's a very hopeful research project, I would say. I don't know of any result. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay, well, um, not then. Let's uh, thank Mario again.